Welcome back to another stock market open a live stream today. We start the day with good old BTC at uh, 70.5k. Uh, one thing we've been watching is it feels like we've been getting a little bit stuck in this path over here on the right. This is the 30 minute chart uh, and we've getting We've kind of been getting uh, or rejected, 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 but we're over that trend now. Uh, if we go out to the uh, hour chart, we can see that as well. The question is, could we fall back to this sort of trend line that we've got? Uh, that's uh, what some folks are watching. If we go out to, to the day chart, you can see a little bit more different kind of trend you could see as well. Uh, are we getting sort of topped off on BTC? Uh, and are we going to converge around that uh, 69 where then we'll get a test? Are we going to break up or we're down? Uh, who knows? We'll see. Uh, yesterday was a killer day for a stock like Enphase. It, uh, let's go to average candlesticks here so we can see this a little better and review. Uh, it uh, had this remarkable run uh, into the close yesterday. It actually spent the vast majority of the day yesterday riding and getting sort of rejected by the 119.05 level. Uh, it did have its little low volume consolidation here, but boy, the end of the day yesterday, you look at companies like Apple, the S&P 500, the Qs, you had your run into the end of the day. Q's over here as well, bouncing off of 171.84 multiple times throughout the day, only to run with higher volumes into the end of the day. Uh, this is, uh, oh, sorry, this is this is Apple, uh, not the Q's. Now let's go to the Q's though. Going to uh, the Q's. Uh, had, uh, again, a little bit of a consolidation here. This was just yesterday's drawing here. Usually when I draw a drawing just for a day, I like to go ahead and make that yellow. So let's go ahead and make those little drawings yellow. Uh, and uh, nice little breakout here at the end of the day. Really nice, as well as in the S&B 500, the same thing. So pretty wild uh, run there into uh, the end of the day. Uh, exciting. Yeah, especially since it's Easter uh, week. Well, I guess, how would you say it? Yeah, Easter week, Easter weekend, uh, whatever. Easter is this weekend. Uh, as a result, we do have a shorter uh, week. Today will be the last day of trading. So if you're trading options, we uh, got to close them out by the end of the day today. <laughs> Tomorrow markets will be closed. And uh, we did get uh, a little bit of yapping again from the Fed. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, tomorrow, we won't have an open market, but we'll actually get PCE data tomorrow, which is a little annoying. And then as far as today, we get GDP annualized. That just came in at 3.4. The expectation was 3.2. GDP price index expectation 1.6. We got 1.6. That's good. And listen to this core PCE price index quarter over quarter. This is for the fourth quarter. This does not include Q1, so it's somewhat dated data. Uh, but uh, core PCE prices for the fourth quarter come in at 2% versus the 2.1 expected. Initial claims come in at 210, pretty much bang on expectations. Uh, last week was 210, uh, revised to 212. Survey this week was 212, so basically same as expectations when you average that out. Continuing claims at uh, 1.819 million, roughly at expectations of uh, 1.815, uh, and then we also had a revision down of about uh, 12,000 for last week. So pretty, pretty good set of data there. Nothing at all to be upset with regarding that data. Uh, you can see the Qs uh, responding slightly optimistically to uh, the data that just came out. Though, again, it's Q4 inflationary uh, figures. So the, uh, uh, the impact of uh, those numbers on our future inflation are quite limited. Uh, we do have uh, a new Atlanta Fed... GDP estimate coming out on Friday. Uh, oops, let's see here. This thing again. So, let's see here. Mm, Friday's estimates for uh, uh, the Atlanta Fed GDP will likely just sort of continue this trend that we've been looking at, which has been this sort of more volatile in the low twos of a percentage of GDP. Right now, sitting at about 2.1. 
have come down from about uh, 2.9 to a little over 3 for the earlier part of the quarter. So uh, we are seeing sort of those Q3, uh, Q1 estimates rather start trending down a little bit. So uh, with that, we did get some enthusiasm from uh, Mr. Waller about the state of the market uh, and the economy. Christopher Waller says uh, there is no rush to lower rates, emphasizing that recent data warrants delaying or reducing the number of cuts seen this year. So this is somewhat expected, though, that we're going to get more of this kind of Fed speak. Uh, really not a surprise that cuts might come a little later uh, or come a little uh, lower than previously expected. But uh, this is Chris Waller. I want to see if he's a voting member. FOMC voting members. Let's see. <coughs> Mr. Waller. Yes, Waller is a voting member. So uh, it's, I, I always like to see, you know, what, no, do they actually vote or, uh, you know, what? Where, where, where do they sit in terms of uh, uh, <laughs> uh, their powers that be, if you will? All right, there we go. So uh, let's see here. Now, what else do we have? We've got, oh, over on eHack, we threw a bunch of uh, updates on the uh, bridge disaster. Now, uh, in the, we're going to throw up our morning news here, and we've got caddies. Let's see what other caddies we have today. We have, today's the 28th, so we've got University of Michigan sentiment. That'll come out soonish. The uh, sentiment index is a expected to show one-year inflation at 3.1, up from a prior of 3.0. It could potentially be because we have seen sort of inflation start trending up a little bit. Uh, and it's not uncommon that when we start seeing actual inflation levels uh, trend up that uh, we end up getting uh, the inflation expectations moving up. In other words, inflation expectations tend to follow what some of the inflation readings are. And it's not entirely abnormal. It just makes you kind of question the reliability of data a little bit more. It's just like, okay, well... How important are inflation expectations if it's really just going to sort of reiterate what we've heard about before? And who knows? <laughs> but uh, they are something we like to look at. So we'll see those come out at about 7 a.m. And uh, again, a GDP Q4 uh, annualized. Uh, let's write that down really quickly. Again, comes in at 3.4% versus 3.2% expected. This is the third and uh, final release for the fourth quarter. Uh, so you have three releases for this. You have uh, an, a preliminary, uh, a revised, and then a final. And so the final release is going to be the 3.4 number, so a little hotter than expected. And that final uh, Q4 price expected uh is, uh, is again, 1.6. So we did get that low inflation. Uh, GDP price index, 1.6% uh, versus 1.6% expected. So very good. Uh, again, that's Q4, though. So a little bit uh, old news, as, uh, as we like to say. All right. So, yeah, okay. Q's and SPY slightly red now. I'm not sure if it's... If it's sort of the realization that maybe this data doesn't doesn't so much matter, uh, Q4 is old news though. I'd like to say, I think what matters or might have a little bit more weight today would be Chris Waller of the Fed, and uh, I want to see if that's affecting the odds of a rate cut at all. Last I checked, we were still at 75% for June. And right now we're sitting at about uh, yeah 70.4% for June. So you are seeing a little bit of an adjustment. So odds of rate cuts. Let's go with, let's write this down. So we've got uh, June. Uh, June is rate cut chance of 70.4% uh, for one cut. And then July gives us... Uh, at least a, 
Oh yeah, we're in the high 70s here. July would be 76.8% for at least one cut. Uh, and then we have, let's see, September. <clears throat> September, you're, you're basically sitting at a 90, oh boy, what is that? September is a 90, Point uh, seven six three three five ninety three 93.5% chance for at least one cut. And then December's current pricing. December is pricing three cuts at, let's add that together, 0. 0.5, 7.1, 24.1. Three cuts would go from 25, 5, 7, 5, 5. Okay, so... That would take us here. Three cuts are priced in at, oh gosh, 666% for three cuts. All right. And uh, again, Waller of the Fed. He is a voting member. Voting member for 2024. Uh, recent inflation figures have been disappointing. I wonder if we could just listen to him. Let me see. It looks like there's there is actually a video of him. Ooh, I might be able to, can I pop this out? Oh, but you can't pop it out. Let's see if we can just hear him. Hold on. No? What a rip off. I didn't think that would work. All right, well, I'll play around with that. No? No. Oh, try. Let's try. All right. Well, I'll play around with that, and uh, I'll see if I can get him. But uh, the summary is pretty clear of uh, what his opinion is, and his opinion is maybe just one rate cut this year. Change sound settings. See, that's always the problem. It's, it's. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I like, I like this Windows computer, but sometimes trying to pick the uh, sound is is a little tricky for me. Maybe I'm just sucking it. Oh. Where do I see things standing? I see economic output and the labor market showing continued strength while progress in reducing inflation has slowed. Because of these signs, I see no rush in taking the step of beginning to ease monetary policy. The target range for the federal funds rate has been five and a quarter to five and a half percent since last July. And I believe that this restrictive level is helping to reduce imbalances in the economy and continuing to put downward pressure on inflation. All indications are that the economy continues to grow at a healthy pace. While retail sales and some other indicators suggest a softening in demand this quarter from the second half of last year when growth accelerated, the evidence for a significant slowdown is sparse. Meanwhile, as the labor market continues to add jobs at a rapid pace, some signs point to improvement in the imbalance between supply and demand, but others indicate continued tightness. My judgment on the balance of risk for monetary policy, which I explained in a speech on February 22nd, hasn't changed. The risk of waiting a little longer to cut rates is significantly lower than acting too soon. Cutting the policy rate too soon and risking a sustained rebound in inflation is something I definitely want to avoid. As a result, in the absence of an unexpected and material deterioration in the real economy, I'm going to need to see at least a couple of months of better inflation data before I have enough confidence that beginning to cut rates will keep the economy on a path to 2% inflation. Fortunately, we can wait and see how the data come in before deciding the appropriate time to start lowering the policy rate. The remarkable US economy keeps on chugging along, adding jobs at a rate that over time will keep unemployment near its current historically low rate. But the overall strength of the US economy makes it a fairly easy decision to wait a little longer to get a better understanding of the trajectory of inflation and when appropriate to begin easing policy. So thank 
Okay, well, got that to work. <laughs> so uh, there you go. Okay, that's uh, that's Mr. Waller, and uh, Mr. Waller uh, is um, uh, a voting member of the Fed. And as you just heard him say, we are, uh, or at least he is considering, uh, fewer rate uh, cuts either this year, uh, or is at the very least open to waiting a little longer before beginning to cut. Uh, he did say, though, which is good news, that even if we should delay or reduce rate cuts this year because of the strength of the economy, he said he really needs a couple months of better inflation data. Well, a couple months of better inflation data, let's let's consider what the CPI schedule of releases is. I believe that would put us at June if the next two reports came in good. But let's actually run that to see that. So the next release... Uh, let's see, March CPI comes out April 10th, yeah, next Fed meeting is um, May 1, uh, so only one report between now and then, and then next uh, CPI for April comes out, that would be May 15, and then of course the June meeting next cpi for may comes out june 12 and then the june let's see the fomc schedule i think june is like in the 20s oh june is the 12th whoa june is the same day wow next uh that's gonna be a big day next uh fed meeting thereafter is june 12th Ooh, how interesting June 12th is setting up for a glorious day. Uh, that's just also like nine days before our event in Vegas. If you haven't decided to come to that yet, uh, make sure if you want to learn how to build lifetime wealth in real estate, uh, you want to meet myself and Ben Mala and other speakers that we're announcing to talk real estate, uh, as well as finance topics and innovation topics, make sure to set your calendar for June 21 to 23rd. It'd be really fun. But uh, that is very interesting. That really sets up June 12th for an interesting day. And again, markets are assuming that there's a 70.4% chance that you're going to get a cut, a cutly doodlas on, uh, or, or in June. So uh, market's pretty excited about June. Uh, how much of that ends up getting delayed because of commentary like this, I, I don't actually think much because the commentary itself suggested, hey, he just wants a couple months of good inflation data. Okay, well, that could literally be the two leading up to the June 12th meeting including the data that comes out on June 12th. So, as we like to say, entertainment is guaranteed. So, uh, future slipping just a tad, really sort of a benign movement down here in the morning. Uh, yesterday was a very interesting day. Uh, yesterday we had a uh, market sort of dump in the morning and a rally into the close. So it does indicate this sort of buy-the-dip mentality that... Uh, uh, that progressed yesterday. Uh, what did continue yesterday, though, which did not rally into the close, was AI. Now, this is something that I thought was very interesting. If you look at yesterday, you you had a market that rallied into the close, but you actually had Nvidia that sold down uh, two and a half percent. And while it did rally into the close, it never really got above the the, the lower highs that it had of the day. It's also down another 80 bips in the pre-market here. Now, let's look at a company like Arm. Arm, same thing, same story. Never really rallied into uh, higher levels during the day. Really just rallied into the uh, higher lows of the day. Was down 1.83% yesterday, down another 0.94 today. So you really have uh, AI that the last couple days has been a little bit of a laggard. Instead, what you've noticed if, is if you've, you've had this broadening out of the stock market rally, uh, which is actually a very bullish thing more broadly for, for various different other companies. I mean, first of all, you had the energy plays just go crazy yesterday. Sunrun, Solar Edge, Enphase, really for no enthusiasm on interest rates. Just this is actually very common. We've had this many times over the last year where you'll have these, these risk on rally days. And you'll notice the smaller caps and the energies uh, that have fundamental risks to them relative to some of like the mega caps. You'll see them substantially rally 
on uh, risk on days. And I think that's exactly what we have it, had yesterday. You'll notice Sunrun, Solar Edge, and Phase all up between 9.5 to 16%. Then look at this. Why would Matterport and Lucid be up 7.6-ish percent? Uh, then you've got, you know, Bact and Redfin and Rivian, New York Community Bank, all of these up about 4% pretty remarkable. So really big moves here by uh, a lot of the sort of more riskier class, if you will. Now, uh, something that I did expose uh, myself to uh, is uh, furniture. I got some exposure to Wayfair and Restoration Hardware uh, via, uh, well, over the last, uh, probably within the last three weeks as they were sort of dipping. And uh, the, the valuations on these are actually relatively reasonable, especially something like a restoration hardware. Uh, you, it almost feels like you're at like a furniture bottom. And so what's interesting is yesterday we actually rallied about 3.7% going into earnings. Restoration hardware's earnings came out yesterday and uh, the stock rallied up to uh, 327. So you're up about 10% on restoration hardware. So solid move here on a furniture maybe being sort of at a bottom. Uh, and then Wayfair's up about 4% on the day yesterday, and then also rallying about 26 in pre-market in sympathy to restoration hardware. So uh, some entertainment in the uh, furniture space. Now, uh, Reddit is uh, not experiencing as much as long as well as Krispy Kreme of the enthusiasm of the risk on rally yesterday as well as Celsius. All of these down 8 to 11.5%. Where you'll notice Astero Labs which it was also an IPO that IPO'd just a day before uh, Reddit. You'll notice that they uh, they are also somewhat trending down 4% yesterday, down 70 bips in pre-market here. So some uh, disappointment uh, for the current uh, AI sort of cycle, if you will. So anyway, let's do a quick look at Restoration Hardware just to get an outline of some of their earnings. So we have uh, Q4... Let's see, Q4 EPS, uh, Q4 adjusted EPS actually misses. It comes in at 72 cents. So Q4 uh, adjusted EPS, 72 cents versus 169 expected. So that's sort of a giant, giant decline in EPS. Uh, but <clears throat> what led them up? I think it was their Q1. Let's see here. Uh, la, da, 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 da. Guidance boosts confidence. Yep, 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 yep. That's what it is. Optimistic uh, margin and uh, revenue guidance in their earnings call uh, really uh, led to some enthusiasm for restoration hardware. So, okay. Uh, let's, I want to see if I can go grab the darn thing, but it'll take me a second to get that. So, let's jump in over here for a moment. Life Ooh, Sam Bankman free. We're landing on this. But again, the fact that he testified in front of Judge Kaplan and was seen as perjuring himself on the stand, that's going to be taken into consideration. That was the Not big good. risk in him testifying in the first place. That was the gamble that it would come back to haunt him during sentencing. So we'll see what the judge says. But Bankman free. So the guy's just an idiot and a liar. It's crazy. Kind of reliability and seemingly. His demeanor on the stand, I think, is going to be something that at least legal experts are telling me is going to be huge in that sentencing consideration. Yeah. Kate, thank you. We'll be watching. Yeah, he comes across as like just a sociopath that doesn't care about anyone else uh, when he testifies. It's the same thing that happened the first time. Uh, it's just a nut job. Squawk Pod on your favorite podcast app and listen anytime. What? We're coming right back for Becky to do another interview. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Okay, all right, I got restoration hardware here. Hold on a sec, I wanna see this quickly here. Uh, we just wanna take a quick look at this. So I wanna see demand. Uh, all right, let's see here. Okay, ah, see accelerating demand trends in the second quarter, second half of 2024. Should provide an additional lift to demand. Uh, interior source book, fine, whatever. What else do we have here? Let's see. We expect our demand trends to accelerate throughout 2024 due to the extensive transformation of our assortment. We do expect revenue to lag demand during the year by approximately four to eight basis points as we react to new collections, uh, reduced back orders, shortened special order times. Therefore, we'll be guiding and reporting both demand and revenue growth each quarter so shareholders can accurately analyze the business. Okay. 
for the fiscal 2024, we're forecasting demand growth of 12 to 14 percent revenue and revenue growth of eight to 10 percent uh, growth. Uh, operating margin around six to seven percent, adjusted EBITDA twelve to thirteen, which usually adds back in stock comp, just to sort of get an idea of the actual cash flows over at the company. So it looks like they're yeah that's that's the idea is sort of guiding enthusiasm for the rest of the year, when you have more demand than supply, uh, but when you have when you have lower demand and supply rather, if you want to move, uh, your inventory prices are going to come down. It's no different. Okay, so what do we have here? When you have more demand than you have supply, supply margins can go up and supply can go up. Okay, so what are we at? So I think they're just sort of talking in circles here at a moment. Uh, and, and again, we're just taking a super brief look here. Uh, first quarter demand, yes. Mid-single digits is what we're thinking for demand for Q1. Okay, fine. Demand trends are building, going to continue to build throughout the whole year. Let me give you... Breadcrumbs, the outdoor business, is off to an extraordinary start. So we have a lot of confidence in the next quarter. Wow. Kind of goes to show how just like a confident earnings call can actually make the stock run. Whereas like a non-confident earnings call like you've had at other companies, not to mention any names, Elon, uh, can, can lead the stock to sell down for a while. So confidence in the CEO getting through uh, tougher periods can, can be pretty important. I know sometimes people are like, oh, but Kevin, it's, it's realism, it's realism. It's, well, that's fine. You can be realistic, uh, but then also see the bright side. Or you can be realistic and just look at the negative side. And investors react to one. <laughs> so anyway, all right, what does Becky have for us today? For the opening bell on Wall Street, Dom Chu is here. He's got to look at some of today's top pre-market movers. Mm. What you seeing right now, Dom? All right, so Becky, let's come you up to speed on the trading action around the takeover Thursday story of the morning. That's Home Depot, America's second biggest home improvement retailer, up just about fractionally right now, around 12,000 shares of volume after it announced it will buy private equity-owned SRS distribution for roughly 18 and a quarter billion dollars. That includes the assumption of debt. That would make it the largest ever purchased by Home Depot and would help it expand its presence and reach amongst those so-called pro-customers made up of contractors, handymen, other business customers, as opposed to retail do-it-yourselfers. SRS has more than 760 locations. It's going to combine with Home Depot's over 2,000 stores and distribution centers, so we're watching HD shares. Also, shares of Tesla in focus all week long, given the expectation for the release of first quarter delivery numbers next week. That stock is moving right now between gains and losses, just around over 800,000 shares of volume. We've told you about some of the analysts during the week that have been taking down some of their estimates for those deliveries. You can now add Tesla bull Dan Ives at Wedbush to that mix. He keeps his outperform rating on the EV giant while lowering his target price to 300 bucks. It was 315 prior. He's citing, amongst other things, expectations from some of those softer delivery numbers. So those Tesla shares down one half of 1%. And let's end on shares of Estee Lauder, which are north of 3% higher on 28,000 shares of volume. The beauty products giant behind its namesake brand, also Clinique, La Mer, Bumble and Bumble, other brands as well, is getting upgraded to buy oh, from at, uh, at Bank of uh, America from a neutral. It's also bumping up its target price to 170 bucks. It was 160 prior. They're citing things like an expected bottoming of the earnings trend, also new product releases, more balance and growth across different geographies and products. So, huh. Wow, okay. They cut. CNBC just got cut. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway, uh, that was a little bit on Estee Lauder and Tesla. Uh, yeah, the um, Tesla numbers come out. Oh, there we go. They're back. Tesla numbers come out April 2nd. Uh, should be pretty early in the morning on April 2nd. So it could be somewhere in like that 5 to 6 a.m. hour for, uh, for, for us here in California. So usually somewhere around 8-ish, 8 to 9 East Coast time. So April 2nd is Tuesday, if I have that correct. April 2nd, yep, April 2nd is Tuesday. So won't be on April's Fool, April Fool's Day. Uh, only, only fool on April Fool's Day is a fool with an anniversary on April Fool's Day. My anniversary is this Monday, fortunately. Uh, anyway, so let's see here. What does Wall Street Journal have for us today? Mm, not much. 
Yeah, and we'll talk about gasoline prices. How are we doing on uh, oil? Yeah, oil, wow, oil's at 87 bucks now. Holy smokes, it's sneaking up. Uh, so, yeah, here, I'll, I'll pull out uh, oil and the oil chart right here on screen. Look at this. I mean, we're up from December 11th at about $73. We're, uh, we're, we're all the way up now at, uh, 87 bucks, so, what is that, 15, $14, $14, it's not great, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> long weekend, plenty of time to cook the, <laughs> uh, cook the books, that's scary, yeah, well, take a peek at, um, uh, as far as the, uh, what's it called, uh, the bridge collapse, I posted about ehack.com about some of that, so make sure to check out e-hack. I uh, always enjoy posting summaries there. Let's see what we have over here. Oh, see, they're cutting in and out today. I don't know what their problem is. So, I don't know. Okay, let's try, uh, let's tr oh, well, here we go. Healthcare, too. We've only got about a minute left, Kevin, but where are, are you seeing the places that you like within the healthcare sector? Sure. Healthcare, you can invest in two different ways, Becky. One is through large cap pharmaceutical companies. Secondly, through smaller cap biotech companies. There's a lot of fascination right now on weight loss drugs or obesity related yeah. drugs. In the large cap arena, how about Eli Lilly with their Zepbound product or even Monjara, which is a type two diabetes treatment that also has weight loss characteristics. And then in the small cap space, we like and we hold Rhythm Pharmaceuticals, a $2.4 billion small cap biotech company that's developing treatments for rare disorders of obesity and other GI related disorders. I think the pace of activity in MA as it relates from large cap pharmaceuticals buying smaller cap biotech companies is only going to increase in 2024 and Rhythm Pharmaceuticals could be a likely candidate for that type of MA activity. Kevin, thank you. Have a great weekend. My pleasure. You too, Becky. One more reminder for you folks. Don't forget, uh, tomorrow, Markets are closed, but that doesn't mean there's not going to be action happening. Make sure you watch CNBC.com tomorrow morning. That's when we'll be getting that key inflation data for the Fed. It's the PCE, the personal consumption expenditures. That's probably the most important number the Fed is watching right now, and that could determine a lot about where things are headed. Morgan Brennan, Steve Leisman, and Rick Santelli will be online with that number, the news and the analysis that starts at 8.15 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow on Good Friday on CNBC.com. Well, here we go. Last day of the quarter, Joe. You still have Easter egg hunts? Oh, yeah. I bought the eggs yesterday. So do we. We're making more eggs today. 22 and 24. It's we'll okay. You never get too old for this stuff. It's so much fun. You're right. You're right. Happy Easter, everybody. Hope you have a great weekend. Make sure you join us next week. Right now, it's time for Squawk on the Street. All right. Good Thursday morning. Welcome to Squawk on the Street. I'm Carl Kington here with Jim Cramer at Post 9 of the New York Stock Exchange. David Faber has the morning off. Farewell, Q1. It was good to know you. Very good, in fact. All-time closing highs. Best Q1 for the S&P since 2019. The 14th best going all the way back to the 1920s. Busy wow. day today with Fed speak, eco data, and some M&A. Our roadmap begins with stocks on... Yeah, just like I mentioned in a video a couple of days ago, as quickly as the economy sort of collapsed in 2022, or stock market, rather, uh, it, it's rebounded very, very rapidly this uh, the last uh, 18 months or so. And the sentencing hearing for FTX founder Sam Bankman Freed due to get underway in New York City later on this hour. Let's begin with the markets, though, as we close out uh, Q1, Jim. Uh, you've been talking about broadening, but yesterday was what an example of it. Well, I mean, but I would say, I mean, the banks are great. The industrials are great. There's some health care like Merck that's phenomenal. An entertainment company like Disney, of course, we got a proxy fight there. American Express was amazing this quarter. So if you think about it, and Caterpillar, American Express, Caterpillar, Disney, these are remarkable companies to be uh, winning right here at a time when... Ooh, let's take a look at some of these. I don't, don't want to hear too much of Jimbo in the morning, uh, but a little bit's always okay. Let's take a look. So we've got, uh, how's Cat been performing? Caterpillar, weak chart, look at that parabolic move on Caterpillar. So you got your industrial over here. How does that mean Deere is doing? John Deere, D-E. Uh, John Deere, less less of that sort of parabolic move. Kind of reminds me of like the difference between Microsoft and Amazon. Amazon, 
uh, has has come out of a hole, but it's still not past those all time highs uh, prior. Whereas Microsoft has had uh, that sort of parabolic run when you compare the two. Yeah, Q's in the morning here, up a couple basis points now. So looking like a benign kind of start to the day. Again, yesterday we had a sell-off going into the start of the day and a rally going out of the day. Yeah, and uh, still red on, on the chip sector, though. You've got um, Apple, uh, NVIDIA, ARM, these folks a little red here. We'd look at uh, AMD. Let's take a peek here. AMD down 26 basis points. And uh, the uh, Q's basically flat. Okay, so we've got 28 minutes to go before El Bello. Let's take a look at uh, what else we have. Uh, let's see here. So Intel enters most loved stock uh, in ESG funds. Wow. Estee Lauder exits. Okay. Uh, I think there are a lot of people who are upset about ESG, so I don't know if that's a good or a bad, but whatever. Uh, as far as uh, Tesla, let's see here. Uh, I see. Right. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's a piece here about the assembly line versus the unboxed assembly line method for Tesla, and that uh, if they could really get to assembling all parts of the vehicle in sort of one station versus moving down an assembly line by using robots that that could actually get us to that $25,000 car but they say it would require breaking the 100 year old factory habit of assembly line production and uh, it might take some time yes everything takes time everything takes longer than we expect dollar rally is on borrowed time as a US disinflation lags the world yeah, well, uh, the longer inflation stays elevated in the United States, the longer you're going to have a desire in the dollar because rates will be higher in the U.S. That was always one of the risk factors of the dollar and sort of the fall of the dollar is that if every other country uh, has a worse economy than us, then we would be the best of the worst and the dollar would actually potentially get more demand and therefore higher pricing. This is kind of interesting. Uh, bonds right now at still about 42 They've kind of been eking down a little bit, though, uh, just really uh, it, over the last week since the Fed meeting. I mean, if we look at uh, the bond market year to date, we could see we were uh, up around these levels in mid-February, went into our Fed meeting, uh, and CPI data release is what happened over here. We had our CPI data release. Uh, and then we once we hit our Fed meeting, we sort of trended down from the Fed meeting. So slowly trying to trend down. Though we've got to the five year, we can see we're still sitting at some of these high levels on uh, the 10. And then we look at the two year, two years sitting at uh, four, six. So we just got more inverted. We're at about 40 basis points of inversion right now. So more inversion, not less. What was it, Bond House, Bond, like, mm. Dark Fall, whatever. I mean, he's got yes. this great, great place in the country. And I, I have to applaud him. And everyone wrote this company off a second time. And he has what, it, what people want who are wealthy. And he recognizes that there's a class of people everywhere around the globe that wants this stuff. And he's really the only one. So uh, I think this is a great story. And I think it's been a while. Gary had been so downbeat on his last calls that I would send him an email saying, Gary, you got to cheer up. And then I would send him something that my wife had bought that, brought, that just made the quarter. Boring. All right, how's, how's Truth Social doing? DJT, knocking on the door of that line again. Yesterday, we could not hold $69 hollas. And uh, got a little stuck there at the 69ers. And got rejected multiple times. And uh, let's look at gold price. ESG is a scam. Let's see the price of gold. Gold is twenty two thirty two. Good, good move there. So Caterpillar is making money selling to Israel, helping with their oh, yikes. So let's see here. V shaped inflation rate under Joe Biden. Oh no, 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 no. Inflation tailwinds are likely to are likely helping gas, wheat, and metals, inflationary tailwinds. Oh, push them up, you mean? Yeah. You know, uh, it does make me wonder. I want to see what uh, Dan Ives did say about Tesla if he just released. 
I think he's a good guy. Uh, he always has those funny jackets. Let's see here. Uh, so, does he talk about it? No, that's on Disney. Let's see here. Ah, here we go. Okay, he quote tweeted his Benzinga piece. Okay. Take a look. So, Tesla bull trims price target ahead of Q1 deliveries, warns of darker days ahead for Musk. This is a fork in the road. Darker days ahead. Oh, that sounds gloomy. So, this is Dan Ives, too. This is like mega bull. This, this is like, um, who's the fun strat guy? This is like the fun strat guy of Tesla, Dan Ives. Uh, like, you could do no wrong. It's like, you hear Dan Ives, and it's just like, bull. Uh, uh, was it Dave Lee? The Lee guy? You know, everything's always up. Uh, yeah, yeah, Tom Lee, that's him. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, Tesla analyst uh, Dan Ives maintained an outperformed rating on the stock and cut his price target from 315 to 300 Tesla has been haunted by both demand and supply-side issues, said Ives in a note. The first quarter has been nightmarish for Tesla as China demand remains relatively soft, or I'm sorry, remained very soft from the beginning of the quarter, and factory planned downtimes and the Berlin fire have impacted supply. There is no denying this quarter has been a quarter to forget for Musk and Tesla. The weakness may have been exacerbated by the Model 3 Highland upgrade issues in Fremont and flattish sales in Europe. Oh, that's not good. As such, the analyst reduced his first quarter delivery estimates from 475 to 425. Whoa! That's actually a big cut from Dan Ives going down 50,000 units. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a big cut. Uh, that is still positive year over year by like 2,000 units. Citing the perfect storm of demand issues. Biggest and most concerning issue for Tesla and its investors is rising competition in China. That's an international issue. That's not so much of a U.S. issue. The analyst said, as opposed to the 2.1 million unit estimate, a 2 million number now looks like a more realistic target. Okay, so what, what is 2 million? 2 divided by 1.801. That's about an 11% growth level if you get to 2 million. Negative narrative justified, question mark. As such, first quarter deliveries will not be a moment of celebration for the bulls, instead be a rip off the band-aid quarter for Tesla investors. We believe the Tesla narrative is as negative as we've seen in the last few years, with Elon Musk getting attacked by bears from all directions, the analyst said, adding. But unlike other times, now it's warranted, as growth has been sluggish and margins show compression, with China a nightmare. Dang, Dan Ives, you sounding like uh, sounding like a bear yourself. That's it. Dan Ives sold. Dan Ives a bear. That's it. It's over. Cancel Dan Ives. I'm kidding. Uh, for Musk, this is a fork in the road. Time to get Tesla through this turbulent period. Otherwise, darker days could be ahead. Oh, okay, okay, okay. See, I thought the uh, headline here said warns of darker days ahead implied that darker days were be were ahead. But he actually said could be ahead. That's a little different. The analyst, however, is confident in the long term, high degree of confidence in the FSD and autopilot strategy, future promise, valuation support. For a turnaround, they recommended giving a formal guidance range uh, in their next earnings report, a Q1 conference call that delves into the demand issues in China, hold a battery AI event. Uh, Musk needs to commit to being the CEO of Tesla for the next three to five years, including its AI endeavors, start a real advertising campaign. I mean, right on, man. Right on. Ab absolutely. I think this is, uh, this is critically key here. It's like, look, you got a CEO for X now. Let's, let's move on. Uh, anyway, we remain bullish over the next few years, stronghold in the market, bloody, 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 bloody. However, getting through this white knuckle period will be a defining chapter for Musk and co and the future of Tesla. Ooh, Dan Ives turns bearish. Dun, dun, dun. I feel like it's like, uh, what, what's that, who wants to be a millionaire? When do they make that sound? Dun, dun, dun. I, I, I figure that out. 
Oh, I need to have a sound button for that. Take you live to that scene, talk about how that develops later on this morning. In the meantime, futures looking okay here, coming off the 21st closing high of the year so far. More squawk in the street straight ahead. I'm probably just going to get demonetized, but it's the who wants to be a millionaire suspense. Who cares? This is fun. No. No, it's not bad. Stop it. I want that. Who wants to be a millionaire? Let's play. <laughs> yes. Yes. That is exactly what we need. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we just need to go in here. Let's see what Tesla stock is doing today. <laughs> oh, yes, please. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> somebody's like, I like the first sound better. <laughs> yeah, is there a phone a friend sound too? Hey, I, I don't remember that. Who wants to be a millionaire phone a friend music? Oh, there is phone a friend music. Oh, the clock. That is a great idea. We should do that. Like as as CPI comes in, like like as we're waiting for for like JPOW to come out. <laughs> Those are great. Those are really good. I like that. Oh man, that's that's good. Go yourself. <laughs> well, is that clear? We'll, we'll put those right next to that. <laughs> oh man. Okay. All right. Very well. So, where were we? Okay. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Link that sound effect to the U.S. debt clock. Oh, well, we don't want to be depressed. <laughs> uh, okay. So, what's moving the pre-market? Restoration hardware. Let's go. Let's go. Snowball. <laughs> yes. I like it. Restoration hardware is basically running. It's, it's your big runner today along with Wayfair. I'm very excited. I exposed myself to Restoration Hardware and Wayfair. That sounds inappropriate. Uh, but anyway, before earnings, so that's fun. Uh, DJT is also up there in that uh, almost 4% range. Uh, and then we're really looking at the downside. You've got AMC down about 14%. What happened to AMC? Is it just GameStop? Let me see. Uh, ha, 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 ha. So let's see here. AMC, oh, equity distribution. AMC offers 250 mil, uh, basically shelf offering the agreement. So more money raised from AMC. AMC, let's write that down. May sell up to 250 mil from time to time. It's basically a shelf offering. Uh, stock down 14%. And then, what else do we have? Let's see. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let's listen over here. FTX founder Sam Bankman Fried set to receive his sentencing today in Manhattan Federal Court, Good. months after being found guilty of orchestrating that multi billion dollar fraud that prompted the collapse of his crypto exchange. That hearing set to get underway in a few minutes from now. And our Kay Rooney's outside the courthouse this morning. Morning, Kate. Hey, Carl, good morning. Yeah, we saw Sam Bankman Fried's parents arriving at the courthouse this morning ahead of today's hearing. Bankman Fried's crimes carry a max sentence of more than 100 years. The prosecution has recommended 40 to 50 years. As they put it, he understood the rules but decided they did not apply to him. They say that sentence is sufficient to, and severe enough to provide justice and to dissuade others from committing similar crimes. Bankman Fried's Attorneys, meanwhile, have suggested five to six years. They say their client is on the autism spectrum. They describe him as a brilliant, complex, and humane person, not a villain. They also claim the $10 billion loss figure is overstated and the harm to customers, lenders, and investors is zero, they argue, because the money has largely been recouped. They blame the Chapter 11 team. John Ray, the new CEO of FTX, in a letter to the judge called those statements categorically false called the exchange when it collapsed a metaphorical dumpster fire. This debate 
over losses is going to be key today in that courtroom. Typically, the larger the loss, the longer the sentence. The bankruptcy estate has marshaled about $7 billion in customer assets so far. And while customers could get the dollar uh, value of their accounts back the time FTX collapsed, they won't get their cryptocurrency, meaning some missed Bitcoin's 300% rise since then. The judge has sole discretion in that sentencing. But the fact that Bankman Fried testified, intimidated witnesses, and may have perjured himself, guys, could weigh on that decision. Back to you. Kate, I'm wondering uh, your thoughts about uh, the SBF sentencing memo, where they're arguing for five to six years, uh, in part because they claim he never valued or desired great personal wealth or status. Does that ring true? Yeah, they talk about the fact that they say he was not motivated by greed, which is com the complete opposite of what we heard from the prosecution. They talked about the multi-million dollar penthouses he was buying in the Bahamas. And they said sort of, you know, greed looks different for different people. He may not have been driving a Lamborghini, but the prosecution describes that as- Well, they purposely, he's purposely sold his car, uh, his, his supercars to give off the impression. The guy was a uh, classic fraud. They described it, you know, it might not be the traditional sense of greed, but that's what the prosecution has argued. The defense, meanwhile, says that he had this moral compass. We heard that through some of the, the witness letters uh, looking for leniency, including from his mom, who talked about he was a precocious child, he cares about other people, and they've tried to show the other side of Sam Bankman Freed. It's really up to the judge at the end of the day, but he saw Sam Bankman Freed on the stand, potentially perjuring himself. Experts I'm talking to say that's really going to weigh on this sentencing. The fact that he may have committed a crime in front of the judge could end up adding decades to the sentence. All right, well, Kate, first, you've covered this really well. So let me ask you a question. I, I once gave a, had to give a sentencing, sentencing speech for the prosecution in a, in a federal case, and uh, I was impassioned about it, and I know that 10 years were added to the person's sentence. I didn't expect that. Uh, but is there any chance that there could be, uh, that the judge might say that uh, the prosecution is too lenient? Yeah, so that that's a possibility, Jim, and we've heard from Victims, we expect to hear more today, and that could influence the outcome here. We've heard from about 100 victims so far in some of these letters. Some of them have been really passionate. The judge could say, you know, he's a young guy. That's some of what the arguments in these letters have been, that he has a lot of potential. He had the potential to commit severe crimes, but is also, by a lot of accounts, a brilliant young person. And to put the type of person Sam Beckman Freed is with that amount of potential and intelligence in jail for this long, it could depending on how you see it, be a disservice to society, which is what at least his mother has argued, which you can understand where she's coming from. But we have heard that, and that could also, his how young he is could also play into this. They, they may not want to send him away for life, which is what I'm hearing from experts. The range, the consensus is really 20 to 30 years. All right. Lex, Lex Luthor was a brilliant man. He's got to be gone for at least a 30-year mortgage. That's, that's my take. Uh, anyway, um... Yeah, uh, thanks, Nature's Galaxy. Yeah, that was that was a rough time. The the FTX era. It was, uh, boy, that's that's some crazy crazy poopy doopies. Uh, but yeah, I remember just like the it was like the two weeks leading up to the collapse. Everybody's just like, and we're making videos going, get out. It's gonna get worse. Get out. It's gonna get worse. And then it collapses. It's terrible. It is, it is just like such a hit to the crypto market. Anyway, um, crypto survived. Uh, Xiaomi just released an electric car $4,000 cheaper than Tesla Model, the, the Tesla Model 3 as the price war heats up. Really? Let's take a look at this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Chinese smartphone company Xiaomi said Thursday it will sell its first cars for less, for far less than the Tesla Model 3 as price wars heat up in China. Again, this, there's a lot of a, a feeling that Tesla may have started the price war, but China will end it. <laughs> I don't know why that needs to be said like Trump. Uh, let's see here. A price he acknowledged would mean the company was selling cars at a loss. Oh my gosh. They're willing to sell cars at a loss to burn Tesla. Holy crap. No freaking way. Uh, coming out of the gate going, yeah, yeah, we're going to price at a loss. Wow. All key steps are fully automated, can produce an SUV every 76, sentence, uh, 76 seconds. 
It's not immediately clear whether the factory is fully operational. A sedan under $69,000, and then the Model 3 version at $30,400. Wow. Fiercely competitive market. Chinese telecommunications giant Huawei partnered with traditional automakers. Tesla's Model 3 is the best-selling sedan in China and costs less than 500,000 yuan. Right, but this one's coming out for 215,000. Okay. BYD's sedan starts at 169. Neo's ET5 starts at 270 or 298. Geely sedan 209. Xping at 209. Mm. Although Xiaomi is generally known for affordable product, it has been pursuing a premiumization strategy. Wow. I gotta go to China and look at these freaking cars. Who wants to go to China? Field trip to China? Let's go, let's go compare. How, how long did it take me to get to China? <coughs> Do you think they'll kill me if I go to China? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Right, what what have I said in the past? <laughs> Can somebody go to China for me instead? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Max, you'll go to China. Okay, we'll pick you up in Canada. <laughs> oh, we can make it to uh, we can make it to China. <laughs> uh, yeah, I could fly to China. Um, yeah, so only place is Hawaii. Not not enough, not enough. It depends how much you load it up, but if you're gonna go to Hawaii, you gotta bring people. Anyway, so let's listen to With the, the past, and he had to. Uh, some people were saying that that's, this gives the, the game set match to CBS. I come back and say, look, he wants to get out of a business that was really terrible, that was added on. The only problem is, is they just did it last year, but he's. They wrote to him. They made a big acquisition yeah. last year. Yeah. Worse than Goldman Sachs is the way I look at this. Yeah. Retail pharmacy comps, though, up four plus. Yes. And he's going to, I mean, to my understanding, you're going to go into the store. You're not going to pass the cheese at all anymore. Uh, some of the comments here are just hilarious. I can't say these things. I feel like China's worse than Russia. Winnie the Pooh's coming after you. Stop. Stop. He's gonna, they're going to kill me. <laughs> Let, let me just make it very clear. I will never kill myself. <laughs> Please save the clip. <laughs> like, we will not, uh, we don't want to end up like the Boeing whistleblower. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I have seven children. Please. <laughs> they need dad. Uh, anyway, this is, uh, this is Tesla. Not so much after the, uh, uh, the uh, Dan Ives downgrade, but rather... A drop here after the Xiaomi uh, release, basically arguing that they're willing to lose money to uh, uh, screw uh, screw the competition here. All right, let's go. Let's get a little poppy doozles. Uh, there we go. Let's see what uh, what the Doombergs got for us this morning. An ad. Really? Let me go ring the bell again. We should do another bell visit and then and then invite everyone from the market live streams. With a five month rally in play. Nasdaq holding up 18,500. Let me get you up to speed with your morning calls from Wall Street. This is what the scribes have penned this Thursday. First up, Bank of America upgrades Estee Lauder to a buy, saying the earnings have bottomed and that they expect the market share to grow for Estee as it reduces its reliance on China. Next up, DZ Bank downgrades Apple to a hold, lowering the price target on the stock. Analysts see regulatory issues as a risk for Apple. And the DOJ accused it of violating antitrust laws. And finally, HSBC downgrades Bank of America to hold, saying the recent stock rally leaves little upside potential. Coming up, we speak to Mohammed Al Adri on the outlook for infrastructure investing here in the United States of America. His view of assets in the alternative world, right here on Bloomberg. A lot of just music there. That's that's that was very useless. <laughs> In every market, and then we got ads over there. Fine.
fine. Let's see how the sticks are going into the uh, to the pre market. Uh, keep in mind, we have uh, our expectation that we are going to have another price increase on the buy sell alerts. Uh, we had some more trades yesterday. Frequently, we've been having trades every single day. Uh, but um, make sure you join the Stocks and Site group. Uh, that price goes up on a Sunday, Easter Sunday. Uh, that's the end of the month. And then uh, make sure to join us at the event in June. You could bundle those if you email us at staff at meetkevin.com. And uh, you'll get all the uh, buy sell alerts for uh, the trades that are made. Yeah, let's uh, let's uh, and then also the course member live stream, which of course will be going to the course member live stream after uh, this uh, market open live. We've got the queues roughly flat. Amazon's up 19 bips. Uh, we did do some fundamental DD in the course member live and uh, did open a position on restoration hardware. Got some exposure to restoration hardware. It's up about 10.6 uh, percent in pre-market here after earnings with a sympathy play of Wayfair coming in as well. Uh, some expectations that maybe finally the furniture segment may be bottoming out. So potential interesting opportunity if indeed furniture is coming out of its uh, sort of a earnings recession, if you will. Two minutes to go before the bell. I'm watching BTC pretty closely. We're over 70K. We're about to break 71. This is pretty good. If we look at the hour trend here uh, we are actually honestly probably just go out to the day chart here this will be a little better uh what we're trying to really break right now is um this sort of ceiling that we're facing here and let's go ahead and make that a little purple line there to differentiate from our fibbies uh, and so what i'd like to see is a break above uh really the 71 6 level today that'd be really nice and uh, if we could just stay in the 71s or really break out of here, uh, that'd be great. Otherwise, we're going to end up getting sandwiched over here at 69. And uh, that's either going to lead to a breakup or a breakdown. Starting to get a little bit of a convergence there onto that 69 point. Uh, so we'll see. And then, of course, we want to prove that the breakout lasts. Because if the breakout fails, we'll end up with a double top pattern, which is not great. Uh, but uh, optimistic that uh, BTC can can hold over 70 here. We'll see what happens. Uh, Tesla falling again on that Xiaomi uh, uh, price cut release. The argument that they're willing to lose money on vehicles uh, to uh, essentially compete with uh, uh, Tesla and uh, and and other um, competitors. So uh, Bell comes in soon here. We did uh, we did decide as a group to have countdown music now. Financial earnings for Q1, not that far away as we wrap up Q1 today. Let's get the opening bell in the CNBC Real-Time Exchange. At the big board, it's Alta MD, a Colgate Palmala brand marking National Dermatologist Day. At the NASDAQ, Boundless Bio, a clinical stage oncology company celebrating its IPO. Jim, as we try to hang on to double-digit gains for the year so far. What can I say? The broad nature of it is really extraordinary. I think that... All right, all right, all right. Let's see how uh, the market is uh, treating the world. We are down about 10 bips on the queues. This is kind of how we started the day yesterday. You started the day red yesterday, and the sucker just rallied into the freaking close. It was up like 30 bips yesterday. It was great. Uh, looks like end phase just turned negative. It is above the 119. We'll see if it ends up returning to the 119. It did have a nice little breakout uh, yesterday going into the close above 119. Pretty big support line uh, now for uh, end phase. So we'll see if it can hold it today. You've got Qs, uh, 789, somewhere around here. BTC just under 71K. A little bit of a red as the market opens there. Tesla. Uh, really trying to get back to 178 here. Loves the 178 number. It's been rubber banding above and below this for a while. Donnie T, again, cannot stick to 69. Something about Donald and 69 just don't work out. Uh, you've got uh, AMD down about 44 bips. Microsoft 42. NVIDIA down another 80 bips. Apple drops one whole percent. We've got uh, Reddit down 6.2%, crashing into the open here. 
Uh, Hood down about half percent after some of that enthusiasm on that delicious, sexy gold card. Matterport up 7% on nothing. <laughs> I was also up like 7% yesterday. Uh, Wayfair holding on to it's about 3.8%. Astera Labs trying to get back to green here. Let's see what's actually losing today. AMC on their offering down 10.6%, $250 million offering, 7%. Reddit, Carnival Cruise Lines, 1.8. Tesla's over there at 1.6% to the downside. NVIDIA sticking with the 90 basis points to the down. Super Microcomputer, a little bit more than that, at about 1.15 to the down. Then we've got uh, Restoration Hardware now up 12%. A little bit of a rally here on Furniture. Is Furniture at a bottom? Is Furniture at a bottom? Dun, dun, dun. Wait, wait, we have a sound for that now, too, don't we? Is Furniture at a bottom? Okay, okay, no, this is just ridiculous at this point. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, anyway, so uh, Restoration Hardware moving aggressively here as well as uh, Wayfair up 4.25%. Uh, Enphase giving everyone a run for their money. Look at that. Uh, Enphase up again, another 1.7% uh, now. So continuing the rally after it broke out yesterday. Uh, from its uh, its its move, uh, really good for Enphase. Uh, you've got uh, the Qs now down 21 basis points on the Qs. Wonder what's dragging down the Qs. Feels a whole lot like what we had yesterday. Qs are getting dragged down partly by Tesla, Microsoft. Amazon's only down six bips, but it seems to be Nvidia and Apple, both down a percent that are really trying to anchor this sucker down. Disney's up again. This is like the 20th day in the row that Disney's up. Uh, they are at uh, 121 now. Solid move up after Bob Iger came back. Good old Bob. Bob and Bob. Bob replaced Bob, and then Bob came back and replaced Bob and took Bob's old job back. <laughs> uh, yeah. Lulu stuck around this 390 range. It's sort of been barcoding around here. Uh, Intel, uh, you know, bobbing around the 44 level. Uh, Snowflake's another one that's kind of been stuck. You know, this is the weak chart on Snowflake, and you're kind of at the bottom of this uh, shelf over here. So you wonder when this sucker is actually going to take off again. Uh, you know, everybody wants their stock to pull a Celsius. Celsius is slightly red right now, but I mean, nominal relative to the amount of running that you've seen at this company. So really remarkable. Tesla's trying to recover after that China news. China news. Uh, Tesla at uh, 55 bips now to the downside. Uh, that's about a 1% recovery already. Okay, so <clears throat> let's see what uh, the suits have for us today. Yeah, Tesla green candling and NAS still down at 15 basis points. S&P's 500, momentum far from fading. The momentum keeps going. And dollar rally on dollar time. We talked about that earlier. Let's look at charts. We've got, uh, let's see, Waller almost... Uh, Waller moved out, futures almost price out July rate cut after Waller's chat. This morning we talked about uh, FedGov Waller basically talking about the potential for no uh, three rate cuts this year and delaying rate cuts. We listened to his audio earlier in the stream. And when, as usual, we summarized it over at ehack.com. Make sure to check out ehack.com. Remember, every time we go to the pooper, just go to ehack.com. That's, that's what I always like to remember. Because then it, it just gives you, like, rather than go to TikTok or scrolling on shorts, just give yourself a good little catch-up on, on what we've got uh, for you. So, you know, it's a once-a-day kind of thing. I'm not really motivated by clicks on eHack, just motivated by providing really good value. That's why there's, the goal is there should literally be nothing for you to click on eHack.com. <laughs> so, yeah, once you're there, you just scroll. Just scroll, baby, scroll. Markets uh, still pricing in three rate cuts. Yeah, but uh, unclear as to when they'll start. Personally, I think you're probably looking more like a September, November, December. I'd, I don't think we get our first cut until September. And uh, in doing so, you can actually still reiterate the, uh, the three rate cuts for the year. So, oh, BTC is nicely over uh, the, uh, uh, the 71 level. So that's great. Uh, Tesla back down to under 1%. So it looks like you had some buy the dipping momentum there for a brief moment. AMD just went positive. Wow. AMD goes positive while ARM and NVIDIA 
are struggling at about down a percent. Apple's still down a percent as well. Reddit's down seven. Uh, Affirm one. Where are the trades today? Well, TBD. Uh, Matterport. Look at Matterport. It just doubled. Uh, I mean, you just went from 7% to about 14%. Let me see. I mean, yesterday you were up 7% as well. Let's see what the news is on MTTR. And I don't really think there's news. But uh, I think this is just part of a risk-on rally, which usually you see this sort of risk-on. Yeah, you're still losing money for 2024, 2025. Maybe you'll get to four cents of EPS in 2026, which at two dollars puts you at 50 times earnings, and uh, the growth isn't that great. So I, I don't think there's really any news here. Let me see if there's news. Uh, usually we see this. I, I hate to say, it, but we frequently see the risk rallies before a pullback. I, 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 there's always going to be a pullback, so it's like a lot. <laughs> it's like you could argue there's going to be a pullback every single day, and eventually it'll be right, but. Usually the late stages of a, of a bull cycle, you know, like a multi-month uh, bull cycle, usually end in enthusiasm for uh, some of the risk-on plays. So that might be where some of the trades are uh, now, as you are getting uh, some real risk. I mean, look at that. Quantum scapes up 2%, 2.7% here. Uh, risk-on, there's no reason uh, the solar should be up on interest rate, uh, uh, you know, uh, on an interest rate basis, uh, but, uh, and they're still down, you know, still trending down here, but why do you get this sort of bounce? End of sort of a probably near-term bull cycle um, risk rallies. Very normal. Uh, that's not to say there'll be like this giant correction or whatever, but it's not uncommon to go into like a six-week sell-off period or whatever. You buy the dip and it all comes back. Amazon, slightly positive. Oh, look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA just came back from the dead. Oh, Lordy, look at that. Solid green candlestick here on NVIDIA. Everything's trying to go green here. Wayfair, <clears throat> the Q's. Uh, Q's are trying to go green as well. BTC rejected at 71K again. Apple still down over a percent here and really dragging down. I wonder what's dragging Apple down so much this morning. Let's take a look here. Apple, 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 Apple. Yes, let's see here. Uh, apple, 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 apple. <clears throat> Market sees fewer rate cuts. Yeah. Okay. Alphabet, Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, the tech rich getting richer. Okay. And this, I don't really see a substantial news here. Price target cut at Deutsche Bank for Apple. And to 180 bucks. We talked about AMC. Mm, market sees fewer rate cuts. Rate markets have collapsed the pricing of tail risks around pace and magnitude, which we think <clears throat> makes pricing more fair to likely outcomes. A first cut by mid-year may not be followed until another cut after the election. <clears throat> I don't know if they're going to go for the cut and pause method. Cut and pause feels very start-stoppy. <clears throat> I, I personally think you're not going to see a cut until September, but, you know, been wrong before, I'll be wrong again. That's with certainty I will be wrong again at some point in the future. We'll see. And I think that I'm not calling for a full board of uh, Council of Farm Relations and Avon representative, which is what they have, who pelts once. Yep. But I do think that these people are, they need some people who basically like Gorman. Uh, they need, uh, like Rizzullo, like Pelts. I think those guys would... Look, Pelts concentrates his mind. I went to the CEO of Proctor uh, and, the ch and the chairman. They thought he did a great job. Do you want him anywhere near programming decisions at the studio? I, I want him to, be, uh, to help to get the search. That, there's a, I know Sonnenfeld's very against yeah. him. He's calls him the great destroyer of everything or whatever. But I, I, do, I want the board to offer advice on issues involving process. And that's not making movies. It, issues involving how do you uh, cut costs or, or per, personally, how to have a succession. That, Jeff Seinfeld told me that's the most important thing. Right. And they, they obviously didn't really know how to do succession. Uh, I mean, okay, kind of boring there. Uh, you've got uh, Trump Media Group, again, rejected by 69. It's up about 2% today, which, I mean, it's still good. It's still got uh, solid valuation on the shoulders of this uh, stock here. 
how long it'll last is, is the big question. Will it last long enough for Donald Trump to be able to swipe up on the Robins of the Hoods and, uh, and actually start getting some dollar hollas so he can start paying some of them bills? So Reddit, look at that. Reddit just drop, drop, drop. Let's go to the hour chart on Reddit. The momentum is dying for Reddit. Beware below. Look out below. Yeah, uh, let's see. What? Not a lot of... Uh, let's see. Matterport's now up 18... Well, Matterport's a memeing. Matterport up 18% on nothing. <laughs> That's really cool. Let's see here. Uh, MTTR. And we are... Just can confirm here. I don't have any kind of news. No, nope. call options quadruple. Yeah, so probably um, feels like Wall Street bets coming in here. So what are we trying to run to? Oof, there's no real indicator of what we're trying to run to, or are we running from something? Ooh, I don't know. I guess it depends on <laughs> where where your where your head is on those things. Look at that though. Woo! Straight up, Q's flat, end phase running, Matterport's running, NVIDIA goes back green. Overall, optimistic market. I mean, the only things getting hammered today really are Apple and Tesla and then AMC a little bit and going for that breakout again at 71K on BTC. All right. They have to lie with NVIDIA. I know that that's not their thinking. I know that's Jensen's thinking. Jensen did a great takeout in his in his keynote about Apple, uh, but Apple is, you know, marches to its own drummer, and uh, they don't necessarily have to do anything. They can ride things out, but I think a business-to-business -business initiative by Apple, when it comes to the Vision Pro, would be, instead of 350,000, 3.5 million. Mm. That's how big this thing kind of Kind of like reminds me of the day where the iPad was talked about by Apple as a big enterprise tool. It was going to be lighter on airplanes right. for pilots, things like that. Well, I just think that if you're Siemens and you're building these digital twins, everybody in the factory would be doing it on the Vision Pro. If you're, if you're Carvana, which, by the way, has been the best, one of the great stocks of all time, if you want to buy a car, you send people the Vision uh, No, it was, it's not the best stock of all time. It's a company that almost went bankrupt, got priced for bankruptcy, burned its bondholders by about a billion dollars and rallied on the idea that they're making money when the reality is they just recognize that they burned their bondholders. Still losing money. It's a horrible business model. I don't think it's a sustainable business model. Uh, so Jimbo, no, it's not one of the greatest companies of all time. It's <laughs> one of the greatest plays of all time if you bought it at its bankruptcy dip and got bailed out by the bondholders. That was great. But uh, no, 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 no. If, if that's one of the greatest companies of all time, that's sad. That's crazy. How could you say something like that? That's just, it's just silly. It's silliness, Jimbo. Absolute silliness. Uh, okay. So Meta's down about a percent as well. I didn't notice Meta was down a percent this morning. And it is. Apple also down that one and a half percent. And it continues to move down as well. As well as Reddit. Reddit's almost down 10 percent. Yikes. So uh, Astera Labs, not as bad this morning. So AI had a little bit of a comeback this morning, but not Facebook uh, and, uh, and, and Apple. Somebody says, uh, Palantir. Oh, let's see here. Palantir, 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 Palantir. Yeah, it's also recovering after being down about 2.75%. It's honestly a pretty benign market today. Uh, you know, you, you had some drops, now you're having a run. Arm run, NVIDIA run, John Deere run, Microsoft run, uh, AMD, restoration hardware, the Qs are positive. Enthusiasm across the board. It's making a month's worth of supply of Ozempic could cost the company as little as 89 cents. Well, they, we don't know what the real price is going to be. There are going to be two plants in North Carolina for David Ricks and a plant over in Europe that's being done by a uh, big, big contract. Boring. <laughs> Let's listen to what we got over here. Nothing. It's a just an ad. Great. That's even more boring. Or is it? Oh. All right, all right, all right. It's okay. We, we can like Jimbo, too. So, let's see. What else is on the news? We have, I feel like we have covered the vast majority of it. 
It is a low news time. We could look at uh, economic calendar, I guess. Yeah, University of Michigan sentiment and pending home sales coming out in about 14 minutes. We'll probably be in the course member live stream at that time, so we'll cover those in the course member live stream. Then we've got PCE comes out tomorrow at 5.30 a.m. So, you know, tomorrow markets are closed, which is kind of lame. Markets are closed tomorrow. The same day PCE comes out, it's like, oh, that's a supposed to be market moving kind of data. So weird. Uh, yeah, Chicago PMI, that's true. Purchaser Man Managers Index coming in at 41.4 versus 46 expected. And the prior was 44. So did have a little bit of a localized miss there. So uh, what else? A little bit of a pumpy on uh, NVIDIA. Is that what I'm hearing? Somebody in the chat saying that. Yeah, Amazon's up 40 bips. Oh, yeah, look at that. Half percent here on NVIDIA. Very nice. Uh, Enphase coming down a little bit from its euphoria there. I wonder if it's going to end up snapping back uh, to the 1 8, uh, 119 line today. If it does, if it breaks 119, it'll go down rapidly fast. But I don't know. Market momentum today is pretty positive, so I'm, I'm not sure that that would actually happen. I feel like you'd have to get some kind of bad catalyst. Then again, you know, you could get a bad read on Michigan sentiment and inflation. Let's see some kind of downtrend here. So, um, we'll see. Um, what else here? Restoration hardware, 13%. Take a quick look at the ups and downs here. Matterport's still running. It's at almost 19% now. That's kind of wild. I, I really want to start evaluating, like, you know, where, where is the short level for this? Uh, I'm not sure yet. We'll find out. We'll see what what uh, what happens in the day here, but this seems pretty wild. So uh, anyway, okay, very well. So uh, I think that about uh, does it. So let's hit the button, look at a few more sticks here, and we'll get out of here to the course member live. Even though I'm a licensed financial advisor, real estate broker, and becoming a stock broker, this video is neither personalized financial advice nor real estate advice for you. It is not tax, legal, or otherwise personalized advice tailored to you. This video provides generalized perspective, information, and commentary. Any third-party content I show should not be deemed endorsed by me. This video is not and shall never be deemed reasonably sufficient information for the purpose of evaluating a security or investment decision. Any links or promoted products are either paid affiliate or products or services which we may benefit from. I personally operate and actively manage ETF and hold long positions in various securities, potentially including those mentioned in this video. However, I have no relationship to any issuers other than HealthSack, nor am I presently acting as a market maker. Disney doing some pretty good running. Disney up uh, over to 122 now, so good job, Disney. Uh, getting a little bit more of a red candle here on uh, end phase again. I, I really I want to see it hold 119, but if it breaks under 119, I think it's going to go fast. We'll see what happens. Uh, watch that 7 a.m. data release. We'll cover it in the course member live. If you haven't yet emailed us for a bundled coupon for either the event or various different courses, the gold course for example has a ton of new content uh, recently filmed. Great, great course. Uh, check that out. Email us at staff at meetkevin.com. Check out the bundles that are available at meetkevin.com. Uh, my own sponsor, baby. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Oh, and don't forget, if you like this sort of like setup here, the Weeble, make sure to go to metkevin.com slash Weeble. It's linked down below. It's a sponsor of the channel. And uh, that, uh, that one I do love pitching because I use it every single day. And if you sign up using that link, you can get up to $3,000 in free stocks. Thanks so much. Goodbye, everyone.